Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lecture 1 by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the first of a series of lecture. This lecture will be on the introduction to theory of metal cutting, metal cutting model and orthogonal and oblique cutting. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome to P301 Manufacturing Process 2. So this subject deals with metal cutting and machine tools and related aspects. So we'll be discussing the first four modules we'll be discussing on uh, the first two modules we'll be discussing on the theory of metal cutting and in the second module there is some uh, aspect of machine tools like lathe machines, capstan machine, turret machine. <coughs> so all these are there in third and fourth module uh, deals with third module deals with sepa, planar, slaughter and uh, drilling machine. In fifth module deals with fourth module deals with milling, milling indexing and grinding. And finally, the fifth module deals with non-conventional machining processes. So this is all about the theory. We'll directly move, or, uh, move on with module one. In module one, we'll be discussing about theory of metal cutting. So in this video, you'll be knowing about uh, the very basics of the metal cutting. Uh, how what is the mechanism in which the metal cutting takes place? What is the metal of um, model of metal cutting? So all this will be discussed in this video lecture. So let's start. Uh, we'll discuss the history of metal cutting. So metal cutting, there are several persons who have contributed significantly in the uh, development of uh, metal cutting and development of metal cutting machine tools, uh, namely Wilkinson's, uh, Nesmith, Richard Roberts, Halley Whitney, Morsley, and very important uh, contribution. Wilkinson made the boring machine, and you know, this is a very interesting fact. Uh, what James Watt, uh, after he developed steam engine, he was interviewed and he said in his interview that I was able to develop steam engine because Wilkinson has, was able to uh, develop a machine called boring machine. The boring machine enabled James Watt to uh, bore a perfect hole so that the piston in the hole can work perfectly and the engine was developed. So this is a small anecdote about uh, the importance of the inventions related to machine tools and uh, another very important and significant contribution made was by Frederick W. Taylor. Frederick W. Taylor was and his associate developed a material called high speed steel and high speed steel was used as a tool material, cutting tool material and this revolutionized the metal cutting industry and later on uh, Frederick W. Taylor carried out several researches and contributed significantly particularly in estimating the tool life and also made several contributions in industrial engineering. Mm -hmm. So Frederick W. Taylor is an important uh, um, person in the field of manufacturing and industrial engineering. These are some of the pictures uh, of the famous uh, inventors which I have collected from Wikipedia. Okay, now before I start, students should understand the relative movement between the workpiece and the tool in different machining operations. If you take a case of lathe turning, in lathe turning, you can see the work is rotating and the tool is fed to the rotating workpiece. In milling, however, the tool is rotating, not the workpiece is rot not rotating. Unlike lathe turning, here the tool is rotating and the work is fed to the rotating multi-point cutting tool. So again, in drilling, a multi-point cutting tool is used, which is rotating and is fed. The tool is fed. The work is stationary. The tool is fed into the work. Whereas in SEPA machine, there is a single point cutting tool which reciprocates over a work piece. The work is fed to the tool. In broaching machine, the work is fed to the tool and there is a multi point cutting tool which reciprocates over the work piece. In grinding, uh, the grinding wheel rotates. It's a multi point cutting tool and the work is fed, either work is fed or the wheel is fed to the work. So you can see the movements of the work and tool may differ but what exists is that 
there is a relative movement between the tool and the workpiece. So essentially any machine tools, okay fine before I go to that, uh, this is again some other examples of metal cutting. So here the workpiece is rotating, this is turning case and tool is fed in this direction. So this is a turning operation, straight turning operation. So here in cutting of operations, so here the workpiece is rotating and the tool is fed in this direction. Okay, this is called slab milling. This is the milling cutter, slab milling cutter. It's called the plane milling cutter. In slab milling, the plane milling cutter rotates about an axis and generates a surface, uh, normally a flat surface, which is parallel to the axis of rotation of the cutter. So this surface which is being generated, this surface which is being generated, it is parallel to this axis of rotation. Whereas in end milling, we use the end milling cutter. This is the end milling cutter. The axis of rotation of this end milling cutter is perpendicular to the surface generated. Okay, uh, this is about uh, different relative movements of the tool and the cutter in different machining processes. There are several videos I have included, you can go through those videos. So what is the machine tools? So obviously metal cutting are done on machines which are called machine tools, several machine tools are lead machine, drilling machine, shipping machine, milling machine, planning machine, brushing machine and grinding machine. The list is uh, incomplete here. This is some of the machine tools that I have included here. And what are the functions of machine tools? Essentially the machine tool has to hold the workpiece. It has to hold the tool, cutting tool, uh, and move the tool, cutting tool, and the workpiece, or both, relative to each other. And of course, it has to supply the energy that is required, that is the power that is required for metal cutting. So this is how you define a machine tool. So with the definition of machine tool, we we'll directly move on to theory of metal cutting. Now, this model was first introduced by uh, the person called Merchant and his associate Ernest in 1941 in a paper which they published and later again in 1945 uh, this is a very simplistic model although this is a very simplistic model still this model is accepted and is being used worldwide till now now what is this model to explain this model this is a basically a tool work chip uh, interaction diagram so it tries to explain how the metal cutting takes place now in any metal cutting processes you may visualize that the tip of the tool is a wedge shaped tool. There is a video associated or related to this aspect uh, which I have included, I embedded in my online course. Also, I have included in the class materials, you can go through it. So, all metal cutting can be considered that the tip is a wedge shaped tool. Now, when this wedge shaped tool engages into the workpiece, it applies stress. Now, this applied stress. <coughs> when this applied stress becomes more than the ultimate uh, stress of the workpiece material then material tries to flow plastically now this model consider, considers a, a ductile material and it considers the ideal plastic material where once it reaches the um, uh, yield point then after that it flows plastically so here as the tool is moving forward uh, the stress applied exceeds that of a uh, uh, yield strength of the workpiece material. The material starts to deform. And this deformation takes place across a plane starting from this corner and reaches this corner. And this plane moves forward and the chips moves on the face. This is called the face of the tool. This surface is the face and this is the flank. And this chip moves over the face of the tool so the, this plane which separates the deformed material and the undeformed material is called the shear plane i repeat the plane which separates the deformed material and undeformed material or in other words the plane in which the material deforms is called the shear plane now the shear plane is actually a zone but however for a simplistic um, view we have considered to be a straight plane which is actually it, in practicality it is actually a very thin zone so we can safely assume it to be a straight plane now this straight plane makes an angle with the uh, velocity vector or the direction in which the tool moves and this angle is called the shear angle this angle is called the shear angle and the angle by which the uh, tool is inclined away from the workpiece is called the rake angle. Rake angle is important 
provided in any cutting tool because if you keep provide break angle then it provide free passes for the or it provide passes for the chip to flow easily increasing the rake angle reduces the cutting power that is required <clears throat> okay we'll have more discussions on rake angle later for the time being you understand that rake angle is essential for any cutting tool and there is a clearance angle on the flank side obviously this clearance angle is provided so that there's unnecessary to avoid unnecessary contact of the flank side with the uh, machine surface so that there will be wastage of power and to increase the life of the tool as well as in the workpiece so this and clearance angle is provided so every tool will have some clearance angle and will have some rake angle so with this knowledge uh, we can move forward okay the plane along which the element shears is called shear plane essentially it's a boundary between a deformed and the undeformed material okay now while studying metal cutting there are three zones which are important to us the zone one <coughs> extends along the shear plane this is the zone one and is the boundary between the deformed and the undeformed material so this zone is important to us to understand the plastic deformation characteristics of the material zone two is the interface between the tool and the chip this is the zone tool this will help us to understand the friction and wire characteristics and zone three is the machine surface or the finished surface now this we have to study to understand how is the surface roughness and integrity of the finished surface so our interest will rise will lie in these three zones okay now um, pi spine and card model now this i have told that the plane along which the material shear is called the shear plane now this shear plane travels across the surface of the or face of the tool it is almost like a deck of cards moving above each other and there are planes which are called the slip planes so if you if you take a deck of cards and apply a small um, shear stretch on the top side the cards will slide over each other the phenomena of metal cutting somewhat is modeled like a deck of cards by pi spanner and which was accepted so again uh, metal cutting can be considered to be divided into two categories orthogonal metal cutting and oblique metal cutting now orthogonal metal cutting uh, the <coughs> cutting tool is perpendicular to the direction of tool feed or work feed whereas in oblique metal cutting the cutting edge the, the cutting edge not the tool the cutting edge is it at an angle acute angle to the direction of the tool feed or work feed i repeat again in orthogonal cutting the cutting edge of the tool is perpendicular to the work feed or tool feed whereas in oblique cutting it is at an angle now what is happening here the, uh, here see it is the cutting edge is perpendicular here and it is an oblique now once it is perpendicular there are two components of force that are acting uh, and uh, in oblique cutting there are three components of force that are acting so now since it is perpendicular the cutting force acting on a very small area whereas it, it is being a slanting the cutting area is acting on a large area so this increases the life of the tool okay so one very important question one very often asked in the exam what is the difference between orthogonal cutting and oblique cutting so in this lecture we'll conclude here these are my references um, i hope you have liked this video thank you for watching patiently